Are there proper toys for camels to play with? We're going to answer this question on our Q&A. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. Welcome to our weekly Camel Q&A. This is where you ask a camel question and we answer it. I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. And together with other camel experts, we answer your camel questions. So um, we have a great question today and it's a subject I'm very passionate about. Um, I don't know why. I haven't quite figured out why. I'm, I mean, I'm passionate about camels, but, you know, um, I think it's the danger factor. <laughs> this does come with a warning. Um, so the question is, um, you know, are there proper toys for my camel to play with? Okay. And we could not pass up this one to answer. And even mm. though we have done a full blog on this, I think... It'll keep coming up. Yeah, it, it does. One. I'm glad that it's going to keep coming oh, up. Oh, it's, it's a great question uh, because it's easy to assume um, that camels are in a paddock and maybe they don't even have a mate and they just need something to do or they do have mates in there. You know, like... It's like children. We assume yeah. that children need things to play with, that we need to be stimulating them yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, look, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I think the most important thing that we need to think about is um, is the world view from the camel's perspective. Yes. All right. So if you're able to somehow transport yourself into the camel's skin and look through the world, look at the world through the camel's eyes, and uh, and who the camel is, what would that camel want? And the easiest way that I I find myself doing this in all sorts of different circumstances is I go, okay, I'm a camel. I'm from the desert, or I'm from the the steppes of Mongolia or the Gobi Desert. What what am I doing during the day? Mm. What's stimulating me? You know, mm. and 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 you can you can go googling about this. You can watch videos about camels mm-hmm. in the Gobi Desert or in Australia or wherever. Mm-hmm. So you can actually do a bit of a study for yourself, like what do camels do with their days? Mm. Um, how are they stimulated and mm. all that sort of stuff? So from there, that's when you can sort of start gathering information. And this is the information that we've gathered from a lot of observation of camels all over the gro- globe. Mm. Um, on how camels fill in their days and how they stay, uh, how their ke- minds keep to active, I suppose, mm. Mm. and they keep learning. Yeah. I mean, as the camels growing up, little baby camels, you know, little ones, I mean, they will play with each other and they'll play fight and all that sort of thing. And even though they're, you know, a fairly large animal, even at that age, I mean, you know, they're still young. And just like our children, they will, you know, go ahead and have their play fights and chase each other around. Okay, but it's not necessarily a thing for camels to go ahead and pick something up and throw it at someone else. Yeah. Or, you know, well, our kids will do that, but uh, um, but uh, your camels don't necessarily um, look for toys. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's start there with what you said about baby camels. I mean, let's start from, from the beginnings, from the humble beginnings of a camel being born. Yeah. Um, like you said, a baby camel will play with its mum usually. It yes. tests its mum out a lot. They'll yeah. try and climb on oh, the mum's hump. Yeah. They will try and bite and nip and yeah. kick and pretend to jump around and yeah. do all sorts Test of really entertaining things mm-hmm. for you know an outsider. And mum will tell little baby camel. Well, that's the next point in is no that... uncertain terms. There is a there is a boundary, yeah. and the mum will get fed up and just and just bite the camel and just go. Yeah. That is enough, yeah. okay? Or stand up and go right. I, and now I've seen camels away. walk away. Yeah. I've seen camels walk away from annoying baby camels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great lesson for parents. Uh, but at the same time, getting back to it, the camels, the baby camels, not looking for a bone or a stick or anything to play with. Yes, necessarily. Yes, I mean, right. They're, they're just playing with each other. Well, the, what the camel's looking for. Is attention. Is boundaries also. Yeah. Like, I mean, just think of even child growing up, yeah. you know. How do they Where learn what's the right, what's wrong? Yeah. It's through through play usually. Yeah. Okay, this if I throw that, it falls on the ground. Um, but for a camel, it's like, well, if I, if I annoy my mum enough, 
she's going to get fed up and then I'm going to understand the boundary. So it's not exactly the thought a camel goes through because obviously, you know, that's my human thought. Um, but there is, that's why it's such a, a natural thing for an animal to test boundaries to see where they fit in their herd. Yeah. They, and it's, yeah. it's, it's just, it's well, not evolution. What you, it's just uh, what they do. Yeah, I don't know the behavior. word for it. Yeah. Huh? It's a behaviour. Yeah, a behavior, a behavior thing. Pattern. They mm. learn. Mm. Okay, so we've gone through the baby camel. All um, right, so we get to the adolescent stage, and of course uh, they're competing for, uh, for a, space, for attention, uh, um, p- competing for dominance. Yeah. They're competing for um, mates. Yeah. Okay. Um, but at no stage are they still going to go and look for a beach ball. No, right. no. But there's a problem here because um, if if they are an adolescent, they like to play fight and sometimes it gets a bit rough. Yeah. So they will sit on another camel. They if a camel's do. sitting down, another camel can sit on another camel and, well, if that camel's a lot older, it can actually squash the camel and cause lots of problems mm. and even death. Mm-hmm. Um, so this goes into our next point about the problem with toys. Yeah. Is that because camels don't have that innate um, ability to play per se, they're not play animals, they're connection animals, they're, you know, they're not a puppy dog, so to speak. Uh, Puppy dogs like to play. Camels just like to see where they fit in in their environment. Um, Although, uh, I mean, yeah, they they do they do play with each other. I mean, I've mm. played with my first camel. Yeah. Um, we played hide and seek quite happily, and uh, and the camel would literally leap into a creek to come to the other side to to catch me. Oh my god! Know? Well, that was um, you only had one camel too. I she didn't know camel. that she was a camel. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> she thought true. she was that's your all. like friend. I know. And I know. A human. That was a bit different. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, look, and then when you get something like a big ball inside a camel's paddock and they're playing with this ball, they will go ahead and kick and, you know, because it's moving, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's moving. It's doing something, okay? But what the camel's thinking when it is kicking that ball, because why, why does a camel kick in defensiveness? Yeah, usually, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And or to get something away. I mean, yeah. even in their herd environment... If they're kicking at another camel, it's to, you know, like I'm the dominant one here or, you know, get out of my space sort of thing. Um, So if they're kicking a ball, it may appear that they're playing, Mm. but ultimately what they're doing is going, what the hell is this thing? Why is it in my space? You know, is it going to hurt me, you know? Um, it, it just depends on the camel, actually. I think it's also just the movement as well and, uh, and you know, just uh, something Curiosity. to do. But the thing is, is that what we're doing uh, with that sort of activity is, or allowing the camel with that sort of activity is is it's it's reducing the boundaries uh it, it, you know and something else goes into the yard right now if it's a kid for example and that, this is my always been my fear if a kid goes into a yard of a, you know with a camel that's untrained but has been uh, kicking balls around is it going to think that this kid is a ball especially uh, if that kid's something. wearing and, a red jumper and, and that ball was red or the ball was blue and it's a foreign thing in there. Yeah. So it's actually creating room for um, for bad habits, I think. Really and bad. you know, I'm not gonna Dangerous. be I'm not gonna be blunt about this. Russell can be quite gentle and kind and not you know, get around the point. Oh sorry, don't do it. Yeah, I'm I'm all for it. Do not do not <laughs> do give not camels it. those types of choice. No, no. Because it is uh, we've seen a lot of this go wrong. Um, and then camels will try and sit on balls or um, you know that sort of that sort of yep. stuff. Sit on a ball, yeah. and then they call all... it enrichment. Oh, they call them and enrichment in exercises toys or, or toys or it's something like that. It's wrong. Enrichment. Uh, something. I'm sorry. I will not. I will not hesitate in saying it's wrong. But if you're doing it, don't feel bad because no. you did not know. No. Okay. No, don't like... feel bad at all. But uh, there's an element of danger. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's our biggest fear, and I'm just expressing our fears. Um, for the safety factor of uh, you know anyone that that camel is going to come in contact with, at the end of the day, I think what we need to think about is where do we want our camels to be in the long term. All right, I think that's really what we want to be thinking more of. 
And do you want the camel to go ahead and uh, lash out and kick and, you know, roll and jump on something, you know, for the rest of its life? Or do you want it to be a nice, beautiful, loving, gentle creature who you can trust, you know, that you can walk up to it, it's not going to lash out, it's not going to pretend that you're something that you're not. Well, this is the and thing with toys is they can't talk back. They can't yeah. kick back like another camel would or another so, animal would. So where do you want the camel to be in the long term? Okay, now if your answer is you want your camel to be that loving, kind, gentle animal that, you know, has instructions and that sort of stuff uh, that it follows, um, it wants to be with you, I would strongly suggest that you don't do the toy thing. So if you're wanting to do the toy thing, don't do the big balls or, you know, the, the drums or the things on swings or anything like that. Go to your butcher and get a bag of big bones, dry them out, and then put them in the camel paddock. Okay, not only will the camels appreciate it because they'll chew on those bones to get the phosphorus, okay, but that's the sort of toys that camels play with, if you wanted to call it play, in the desert. Well, this is, this. I think, I think let's not cause confusion here, is that what we're looking for is, is camel enrichment. I mean, this is why camel owners want toys. They want enrichment exercises yeah. for their camels. Camels are very good at sitting down, looking around and observing and absorbing. But um, the very... other thing with that also is that in the desert environment, what are they doing? Yes, they're sitting down, absorbing and all that sort of stuff and sitting in the sun and enjoying their life, but then they walk for extensive periods of time. Mm. Grazing they wander, they browse. Yeah. Now, this is the other thing we've suggested to clients that's worked really, really well is um, putting, putting, like getting, cutting off some branches that you know the camel will like and that is not poisonous mm. to the camels. Mm. Um, in Australia, things like acacias, uh, wattles, um, salt bushes, mm. uh, you know, there's, there's you can just trial ways, and yeah. test it and, you know, make, and, also be aware of what is poisonous in your area and what isn't um, and cut off a branch of that and put it up super high yeah. that they have to reach with their neck to, to and get their lips nice and, you know, nice and protruded to actually get the leaves. That is what they do in the wild for yeah. stimulation. And if you've got more than one camel, what you will find is they will actually work together as a team one will pull down the branch, the other one will nibble, and then they'll most likely take in turns if they're polite, and they will have this whole enrichment exercise where not only mm. they're learning, mm. but they're also they're doing you know <laughs> they're doing teamwork. <laughs> mm. um, so that that sort of stuff is really really handy too. Yeah, um, that's that's a really good idea, you know. I, yeah, really, really. Well, good. it just makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of mimic. It was the camel's idea the camels, more than my... yeah, the camel's natural behaviour. Exactly, and yeah. that's that's really you know the best thing that you can do for the camel. Okay, and another enrichment exercise. Um, if you've done the foundational training, take your camel out for a walk. Yeah. Abs they God, they love that so yeah. much. You know, they just and and if it's especially walk where somewhere where they can nibble on yeah. some delicious, you know, delicious shrubs and all that sort of stuff, they yeah. will absolutely love that. Just have some bonding time with your camel. Uh, it's semi under instruction, but semi not too. Yeah, it's mm. just enjoyable, and that's enrichment. Yeah, I mean the and the other enrichment you mentioned is is chewing on things. Yeah, um, don't Bag let it bones. be. Bones, yeah. I wouldn't go too excessively with that because you don't want to grind their teeth down. But they do. I've we've witnessed in 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 the desert. I was actually walking a string of camels once, and I heard this massive crunch, like bones breaking. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell was that? And I looked back, and there was this camel that literally picked up a big marrow bone of yeah. a dead cow that yeah. had been dried out by the desert sun. <laughs> And she just away. she literally just munched it in a few seconds. Yeah. I'm like, holy moly! They, they do love it. They get a lot of minerals from that too. Yeah, they do. Um, what's some other things? I mean, they love browsing, so make sure you're switching them between paddocks too. They yeah. like new environments. Yeah. Um, there's the walking. There's putting branches up high. Yeah. Um, getting another animal with your camel. Like yeah. in Australia, it, it's not so common as in the states, but in Australia, we tend to keep camels in pairs because we have more camels and they're not so expensive um but in the united states there are a lot more singular camels um but make sure they've got someone to bond with and be with the number one thing that anyone can do for richmond is to work a camel oh yeah that's the number one 
All right, using, you know, a systematic, I mean, that's what we've got our training courses for, the systematic process, and just working your camel, okay? That is enrichment. Yeah, they and enjoy that, that, that connection. That is really good enrichment because it's uh, not only beneficial to you, but also beneficial to the camel and to the both of you so that when you're thinking long-term, of where you want to be with your camel and how you want your camel to be, then you're actually making progression at the same time. Yep. And then uh, some, working some other camel. enrichment things, I mean, you know, the list could go on and on, but just think of their natural environment and replicate it. Sand in their paddock. Yeah. A big patch of sand. They love rolling in it. It feels good on their their skin and they just they have such a great time in it, you know. They, that's another enrichment thing yeah. that they love. So. Yeah. Just think, okay, the natural environment for a dromedarial Bactrian camel, you know, even in the Gobi Desert, they're rolling in the sand as well. So these are all transferable to both uh, both species or, you know, both the dromedary and Bactrian camel. Yeah. Think of replicating their natural environment and that's your enrichment for them Absolutely. because they do they do not require toys. Yeah. Um, as we've spoken, they and can be dangerous. Just the safety factor in the long term. Yep. yep. Now, if you do want to go more in depth about these toys, we do actually have a podcast we did on it uh, a little while ago, maybe a year ago now. So you can scroll back and find that or just search camels camel toys on our website camelconnection.com and that will come up for some full explanations on the psychology of what a camel thinks about a toy because we could only cover so much in this one that's all right but yeah great question really thank great you question. so much for that question yeah. don't it's forget such an issue such a topic could talk about it for hours yeah but at the end of the day you know think long term and uh think about safety and don't forget, if you've got a camel question, head over to camelconnection.com now and click on the camel question box and ask your camel question. Right You'd on. be surprised at how many people have the same question as you. Yeah. This yeah. is to help everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks a lot. Catch you on the next See one. See you later. Bye. Bye. If you found this camel Q&A helpful, please let us know. Leave a review wherever you're listening from. 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 Do you have a camel question for us? Head over to camelconnection.com to ask your camel question now. now.